the best thing that I have done for my mental health. Create boundaries for myself and learning when to say no. Stop, slow down, breathe, and appreciate the little things. The best thing I ever did for my mental health was to go to therapy. The best thing I do for my mental health is take a bath every night and read a book. Feeling sad every so often is not the same as having depression. Everyone feels down sometimes. That's part of life. Maybe you failed a test or you lost a loved one or you were let go from your job. Even watching the news today can send you in a spiral. Feeling sad after situations like these is expected. That sadness is not the same as having depression. With depression, you're persistently sad and the things that interest you are no longer enjoyable. You may be unable to sleep or you can't stop sleeping. You may feel worthless and feel like there's no hope that it won't end. In some cases, you may even feel suicidal. In order to be diagnosed with depression, symptoms must be present for at least two weeks. Thankfully, even the most severe cases of depression can be treated. It's usually treated with medicine, psychotherapy, or a combination of both. The first step is to see a healthcare provider. Together, you can develop a plan that works for you. If there's a stigma around mental illness and you take a pill every day for a mental illness, imagine how that makes you feel. Uh, Dr. Dom, let's go to you and talk about the stigma around medications. Uh, there yeah. is a lot of stigma around uh, mental health medications. So what are your suggestions or advice about how we can help get around this and help our patients uh, with this as well? I think stigma in general with, you know, surrounding mental health and and again as was previously said not really even understanding what mental health is or even what mental illness is half of people with mental illness don't receive treatment i mean that's incredible and the majority of them avoid or delay care because of fear of stigma and judgment but if there's a stigma around mental illness and you take a pill every day for a mental illness imagine how that makes you feel or imagine how you think that that makes you feel in other people's eyes when you open that pill bottle in front of your family or you have it in the medicine cabinet you're reinforcing negative thoughts and patterns about who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, would you feel that way if you were taking a blood pressure medicine or a heart medicine or a diabetes medicine? Would you feel the same way? Would you feel shameful for that? BIPOC communities, elderly, those who are isolated. Um, I want to know from all of you, what are your sort of best guess thoughts about how we can best advocate for these groups and others who really need um, access to mental health care? How can we meet people where they are and make, uh, make more room? One of the things that, that I think is so helpful, um, we talked about a, a bit earlier, which is that there are different ways to seek mental health support, that you can see someone in person, you can see someone virtually, you can do groups, uh, you can look at apps, you can join mental health support networks, um, take courses, that there's just so much more available that have different price points uh, and dif different mobility issues because money and ability to have access to one, know what resources are and have the ability to, to transport yourself to receive those access were huge barriers um, to receiving mental health support. What actually works is when we go to the community and ask them what they need. Mm -hmm. What does healing look like in your community? How can we support what's already there and, and functioning as, as a, a place of healing? The more that we make it okay to talk about and make it approachable, I think the more people will ask for help. And, and again, I don't think they need to ask for help, but maybe feel more comfortable talking about it. So, you know, I think we're working on that, you know, with schools and with children and, you know, just again, what we're doing right now. But the more we make it OK to talk about, it. you know, if people say they're having a mental health problem. I think we're starting to pay attention more and say, OK, let's figure this out because mm -hmm. this is important and this is a big deal and this can affect your life in a really, really negative way.
when the suicide, my father suicide happened, you know, I, it, you don't know that I didn't know that I needed to talk to someone. I just didn't know. One of the things about, you know, Mama uh, Vance also is that not only did she say, you know, you and Cecily need to go back to your respective locations and find a therapist, but she said, I'm going to do it too. And it's so important because so often we know that adults say, do what I say, not what I do. So Courtney's mother um, offered this foundation that it was okay and actually a necessity to pursue care. I mean, that's what we're here talking about, to pursue care for his mind and his body, his spirit and his soul for his sisters as well. Because as Courtney said, every therapist isn't for you. Not just anyone is worthy of sitting with our stories. You know, there were people, I know, Courtney, you talked about it, who were, and I've had this too, who were more con interested in what you did for a living, more interested in the fact that you were on Broadway, more interested in everything except that your heart was shattered. And I've had that too, where someone is interested in knowing uh, the, 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 the glamour, if you will, but they don't want to touch what's broken. My mother, you know, in the midst of all that we, there was 30 days together with my sister, the three of us together. And, uh, um, and we, my sister, you know, when tragedies happen, you get crazy. And, um, you know, my sister and I were in the room arguing about something, you know, yelling and screaming. And my mother came in quietly and said, uh, you know, Cecily, Courtney, you know, eventually it's just gonna be you two. And the two of us looked at each other and just broke down. And we haven't had, my sister and I have been on the same, have been on the same page for the last 30 years, plus years through my mother's passing from ALS. When you realize that life is sacred and every day it really is precious, that's one less day you have, then then things become important. And that, that knowledge is what um, my mother gave me the gift, the gift of, you know, knowing how the life is about transitions. 